Hi guys, so let's have a look at text flow into document pages. Now this is a tutorial using Affinity Publisher version 2 on the iPad. Equally doable on the desktop of course, Mac or PC. So let's start with a new document. We'll use this as our test document and you may have other document sizes. Think of this as the interior of a book. The first thing we need in this tutorial is a new document. So let's use the 6x9 preset I have already. And you can see it there. Now the major distinction here is that we're using facing pages. So you move that little slider in the top right to facing pages. And the number of pages is 1. No more because Autoflow text creates its own pages. So we won't need any more than one page. You can put more but it will just bump them along and we, that might create confusion in this tutorial. So start with one page. Now let's fill in the details exactly as you see here. I have included bleed because you may have images within the body of your book later on. We're not worried about that at the moment though because we're only flowing text into the document. Now we've got margins in the document and we've got bleed and you can see them there. Remember that we'll be looking at a double page spread when we open the pages up. Now, when you click on New Document, the first page comes up, as you see, with margins and bleed showing. There's one page to start with. That's all we need. It's a single page spread because it's, well, shall we say, page one. Flowing text automatically creates any extra pages it needs. So if you've got a document that's 50 pages long and you flow it into the single page, it will automatically generate the next 49 for you. Very neat. Don't get confused by that because it will do it. So if you create a book that's got 160 pages and you flow your extra 160 pages into that, you'll end up with a book with 320 pages. Ah, gag. You'll have to go back and start again. Now, it creates a new master page because I told it to. Here you can now see the facing pages layout of this document's interior, although we won't be using this master page in this exercise. That's just what the layout will look like. We're not creating a book. I'm showing you how text flows or auto flows into a doc document. Now, extra pages. Let's add some pages. For the front matter, and having said just put one page in, we're now going to add a couple of pages because you've got the flyleaf title page, you've got acknowledgements, you've got table of contents and things like that. Again, we won't use that here as we're going to start with chapter 5 text at around page 5 and onwards. So we've created extra pages and you can see this on the right there's page 1 page 2 and 3 in the spread, and although you can't see the numbers, page 4 and 5. Page 5 is the right-hand page of that last spread. And that's where we're going to start chapter 5. Well, as it is, the text I'm using is chapter 5 from a book I'm uh, writing. Now we add text frames. Pull out a text frame on page 5. So you know how to get to page 5. Tap page 5, pull out a text frame. And you can see it here. Notice the two little triangles. Very important, those little triangles. Now with the iPad, they'll come and go as you change tools in the toolbar. But that's all right, they stay there. And I'll show you that in a moment. Place the text. Now we can place our text into the text frame. And make sure your cursor in the text frame is at the insertion point. And you can see it up the top there, tiny little line flashing away. Well, it will be on your screen right at the top there. Now that's page five and you can see it on the right hand side there now in the in the page panels and it's page five. But you can't see the little triangles now. Hmm. OK, so what we've then got to do again is just tap on the text frame tool in the toolbar and back will come the um, the frames. Now place your text. You can paste text copied from another editor or place a Word document, for example. 
Now you can see there I've copied and pasted, copied that text from a text editor and I've just pasted it into the document where my little cursor was. Okay. Now, what type of text can be flowed into a frame depends on where you have it originally. Let's assume your document is a Word document. You've typed up your book in Word. Nice big long book. Well, we've got Chapter 5 in a Word document. Select Place from the Edit menu and locate your document and tap Open. Now, I found my document. I've highlighted it and tapped Open. Now give it a moment and your text appears in the page, in the page you're working on, but only the first page is worth. Just how you want it. So placed or pasted, now we're ready. Now if you've just pasted it in, copy and paste, it'll look the same, you get one page's worth. If you've placed it from a file, you'll get one page's worth. Now remember I said to tap the text frame the text frame icon, the tool in the left hand toolbar, so that you're displaying your text frame again and you can see those little triangles are now red. Now the red one on the lower right has a little, a little widget if you like to the right of the red triangle. Don't touch that. Oh no. If you, excuse me, if you do accidentally touch that, undo whatever you were doing. Now flowing the text. Now we can auto flow our text into the pages automatically. Because flow creates pages it needs, it will insert pages in an existing document. Be careful to remember this. Now, before you can auto flow that text, on the iPad, toggle the command controller, which you can see in the drop down menu from the editor there. And it's third from the bottom, toggle command controller. And it brings up that circle in the bottom corner there. Tap the circle and then tap the shift key sir, part of the circle so it highlights in blue. If you haven't done that before, practice it. Just tap it so it stays highlight in blue. Now you're ready to go again. You'll see that the triangles are gone. That's because we're doing something else in the toolbar. Don't panic. Just go back and touch the text frame tool. Select the text frame tool again to highlight your text flow handles. The little red triangle on the lower right. You can see the little red triangle there. Now tap the little red triangle and wait a moment. Your extra pages will generate, just like magic. If you cut and paste and then do the shift touch triangle, it works the same way. Now as soon as you've done that, the shift key disappears from the command controller. But have a look in the pages on the right hand side there. You've now got something like 10 pages. It's automatically generated, and filled with text, I might add, automatically generated. There you go. Most of the text manipulation instructions can be found in teeny print on the bottom of the screen. And you can see I've got the, the shift key um, on the command controller showing there, ready to flow the text. Now I'll stop here because it can get confusing if I add too many options. I just wanted to show you how to auto flow text into frames. Don't do it on your live document if you've not done it before. Practice just like you did here with a practice document. You can flow text between frames in an existing document by careful use of those little red triangles. Read the text on the bottom carefully as well as the help file. And more importantly, practice on a dummy document. A good example to try is adding a page into an existing document and flowing the text into and out of that new page via its text frame. I might even do a little tutorial for you on that. Flow text around picture frames is also an interesting exercise. If you've put text into a document 
and you've got an image in there, the text will overwrite the image or it will appear to be overwriting the image. It may even be sitting underneath the image. Depend what you've been fiddling with before you put the text into your document. But it's really easy if you've got your images in picture frames to flow the text around them. You should always be putting images in picture frames anyway. It gives you a great deal of control over them. Okay, that's it for now. That's the end of this little tutorial, so thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe because it's only by your subscription that I'm encouraged to keep providing tutorials. See you in the next one.